I was the U.S. ambassador at the time. I had um, been serving in Nairobi for two years, working with a fabulous team of 17 different U.S. government agencies and focusing on teamwork. And I want to emphasize that because we could not have survived as we did had we not been working together for two years. Um, I had been sending cables back to the Department of State advising the Department of the security vulnerabilities, particularly the location in which we were situated. And the response that I received was, there's no money, you're not on the list, um, you won't be on the list, and besides, we deem the terrorist threat level to be medium. So, so sorry, we'll send a team to um, do this and that in your location. And three months after I wrote a letter to the Secretary of State about my concerns, because as ambassador, like all ambassadors, I had a machine signed letter from the President of the United States telling me that I was responsible for the security of American citizens, not just U.S. government people, but American citizens. I think ambassadors are the only Senate confirmed employees of the U.S. government to actually get a job description. That job description said, you need to keep people safe. Because I could not get my bureaucratic colleagues to help, I wrote to the secretary. Three months later, we were blown up by Al-Qaeda. This was Al-Qaeda's first attack on the United States, simultaneous to an attack on our embassy in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. It was a beautiful Friday morning, mid-morning. It was the day of the week when we had that event everybody looks forward to, which is the weekly staff meeting, which was usually held in my office. But I had finally gotten a meeting scheduled with the Minister of Commerce to talk with him about the visit of then Secretary of Commerce Daly to Kenya. And so I was not present at the staff meeting. Um, the minister's office was in a high-rise building across from the small parking lot which the U.S. Embassy shared with the members, some of the members of this high-rise building. Um, I was on the 21st floor. We had gone through the photo op that usually begins ministerial kinds of meetings. The press had just left. We had gotten our requisite cup of tea. I was sitting next to the minister on a couch, and we heard a boom that sounded to me like a construction boom. And I asked, is there a construction going on? And he, the minister, as well as many of the other people in the room, got up and started walking to the window. I don't know what instinct kept me from getting up, um, but I was the last one up and had taken a few steps when this boom a uh, huge percussion came and threw me back. I, I'm, I, a shadowy, some shadowy figures um, went by. I thought simultaneously, I'm going to die. And it was, you know, endorphin-induced sort of dreaming, ha, huh, so this is what it's like. At the same time, Every cell in my body was in panic mode because I was on the 21st floor. I was waiting for the building to um, collapse and was waiting, uh, uh, literally um, tensing myself for the fall. Um, then I came to, one of my colleagues came rushing back to the room and said, Ambassador, we have to get out of here. And we began walking down 21 endless flights of stairs, a huge, long parade of silent and bleeding people. I was focused on keeping my feet on the stairs. I was concerned. Um, people were quiet. As we went further down the stairs, more people joined us. 
some um, shouted karibu, which is Kiswahili for welcome, as we were joined. Somebody started singing a hymn. I remember we passed the body of either a deceased or unconscious woman, very carefully. And we got to a, um, a point when suddenly the slow parade stopped and uh, we heard voices yelling, hurry, hurry, fire. And the um, smoke came up and I thought, I'm going to die, but at least I'll be asphyxiated. I'm not going to burn to death. And in the meantime, the mantra, I mean, I was just thinking, uh, I just need to get out. I need to get to the embassy. I'll be okay. We'll have a medical unit. We, we did have a medical unit in the embassy. My colleague and I exited the building, and he said, Ambassador, there's press, because remember, we had just finished the photo op, and many members of the media had come out of the building just minutes, maybe even seconds before. Um, the bomb, the truck bomb was detonated. He said, um, Ambassador, uh, put your head down. There's press. And he literally put my head down. I later asked him, how in the world did you think of that? And he said, I think I saw it in a movie. At any rate, I was, was walking with my head down and saw shards of glass and twisted, uh, twisted steel and then came upon the burned corpse of what used to be a human being and my eyes came up and there was the embassy without um, a rear wall, flames of cars. Um, it, was, it was truly a hell, it was truly a hell. And the seventh story office building next to the embassy had totally collapsed. And it was real clear to me that there was not going to be anyone to take care of me. And I had better get in gear, and that's what I did. And our team of people turned from victims to first responders because we were an embassy. Um, not only that, there was not, no 911 in Nairobi at the time. So the people at the embassy came out of the embassy, regrouped, turned around, went back in. What was at that time a, a death trap because a fire had broken out on our generator. The generator had turned on and we had electrical wires that were um, just strewn about and streaming as the water main burst and the water was coming up in the basement and our colleagues chose to go back in and bring out the people they could find, stay with the people who were wounded and ultimately bring out the body parts of their friends and colleagues. And then we started to piece ourselves back together again and we did it as a community of Americans. Americans were given the option to leave. Very few chose. We chose to stay. Our Kenyan colleagues had no choice. And together we accomplished um, what I look back now as extraordinary. And the lesson I learned is that if you can create community, then you can face um, almost anything, even if it is extraordinarily, extraordinarily painful. And it comes back to why I am a diplomat, it is because diplomacy is all about creating community internationally.